Welcome back once again to another edition of the Bobby Kremens Show, along with Coach Kremens. I'm Nate Ross, your host, and we'll talk about all things that encompass Cougar basketball. Coach, we talked about last week, you played Wofford right here in the Carolina First Arena, got a victory, and then this week you had to turn around quick and play Furman in the same building, but under very unique circumstances. Yeah, Nate, uh, first of all, we're coming off a, a loss at Davidson, and to come back home and play the defending champion is no easy test. Uh, Jeremy Simmons had bruised ribs at the time. We did not play well the first half, but we survived the first half. And then in the second half, we might have had our best second half of the season, and we went on for a great victory. After the game, Jeremy's arm swelled up, and we got very concerned, took him to the emergency room. It was not until the next day that um, it was detected that he had a blood clot in his arm under a bone which obviously is very dangerous. And it's a tough, tough injury for Jeremy being a senior. He's out indefinitely. But I'm very, very proud of the way he's handling everything. Uh, I'm proud of the way the team responded going into the next game. Right. I had to come back and tell him that Jeremy would not be playing. So we dedicated the game to Jeremy. And we are playing against a really much improved and a, a team that is playing for a championship in the Furman Paladins. Yep, and we're going to take a look at those highlights against the Furman Paladins right now. Coach, here we go, right here in Carolina First Arena against the Paladins. Well, again, Nate, this was a, you know, very unusual circumstances. No Jeremy Simmons. And we go ahead and start that guy. When, when somebody gets injured, everybody moves up. Sure. And there you see number 44, Trent Wiedemann, our freshman, who is normally our sub. Uh, because of Simmons' injury, um, he starts, and a freshman, James Carlton, will move into Trent Wiedemann's spot. But the guy who carries us, the guy comes through, he's on fire, and that, of course, is number three, Drew Godelock. Nate, uh, th th watch this move. You know, how do you, how do, you know, just he squares, he turns, he's got so many moves. And I tell you, another guy who had a great game. They see, I love when they use the backboard. Donovan Monroe, number one, came back. But we had a sense of urgency in this game. Um, again, you know, the game at Furman was a, a nail biter right until the end. And what a great tip in by the freshman, James Carlton. And without Simmons, we had a sense of urgency. And of course, Furman, uh, Moose Saka, what an offensive player he is. Uh, I, just, I think Jeff Jackson is a serious candidate for a coach of the year in our conference. There you see Monroe using his body, his upper body strength, to get a nice basket. Uh, a block shot, but Willis stays with it, and we move the ball around. There you see, now watch this pull up. See, I love that, I call it body explosion. Um, stopping on a dime and pulling up. Uh, and they see another great offensive rebound by our man Antoine Wiggins. He stepped up as well. Yeah, but we and that you said the key word. We knew we had to step up. They see Furman taking it to the basket. We got to do a better job defensively That's there. Soccer again. Um, good out of bounds play by Furman. Missed shot, and here we go. And now watch this guy. Now, now you got to pick him up. I'm sure. I'm sure Jeff Jackson is upset about that play. Got to guard three. You, you got to pick him up immediately after half court. They see Wiedemann on a beautiful kick out. And now Nate, you know, we don't want Furman to come back in the game. We have great respect for Furman. Again, uh, they they had just beaten Citadel the day before here in Charleston, and they came in here. Nate, they were actually. Had they beaten us, had they swept in Charleston, uh, they could have been tied for first place in the Southern Conference. So what a year Furman's having. Of course, they had the big win against the Gamecocks at home, and then, of course, they had the big win on the road uh, against Wofford. Now you see uh, Godlock coming off a beautiful single screen, and I love the way he square his shoulders and shoots that jump shot. Now we take control of the game. And we have Andrew Lawrence. Again, Godlock coming off the screen. Andrew Lawrence did not score this game, but he had some really, really nice assists. That's and big Reddick inside. Donovan had a, a great game. And, but, you know, Godlock is carrying us right now. Coach, you can't forget unbelievable crowd support. Yeah, uh, yeah absolutely. How about that move by the freshman? He just takes it right to the basket and lays it off the backboard. Great atmosphere. Great win right here for the Cougars in Carolina First Arena against Furman. And next, on the road, another SoCon tough road game at Eli.
Nate, an another tough road game, and um, we get off to a great start. Uh, and here you see great ball movement. And Nate, early on, this guy was just on fire. Drew Godlock had one of the best games of his career. There you see a nice double screen. And, and right now, we're in the flow. However, Elon's going to get in the flow. Great out-of-bounds play called by my assistant, Mark Byington. And we get a nice layup. And, and again, right now, we're off to a great start. We have control of the game. But here comes those shooters. That's called penetration and kick. And the only way you can stop that is by stopping penetration. Antoine Wiggins with a beautiful pass to Willis Hall. And I, I, as you know, Nate, I love when our players use the backboard. Nate, we, we played our freshman for about 17 minutes. Of course, James Carlton. And James did a nice job. There you see a nice jump shot by Willis Hall. And there you see James Carlton on a nice feed. They're going to leave him open for a while. They're going to test the freshman. Uh, but of course, with a situation to Jeremy, James Carlton has to play a lot. They burn us again with penetration kick to the corner. Donovan Monroe, I love the pass out here. Uh, I love the rebound by Wiedemann, and I love the kick out, and I love the three by Andrew Lawrence. There you see a nice uh, play inside, and again, our freshman uh, with a nice follow-up on the miss by Wiedemann. And uh, uh, this is a great steal. He gets fouled on this play. He goes to the free throw line. He makes two free throws. And James is really contributing. But Elon is hot. And now, now the game's about even. And they're actually going to take a one-point lead into the half, almost a three-point lead. Great move by Donovan Monroe. Foul plus one. Uh, a beautiful play. That's his upper body strength. They see a nice fast break here. And, and Donovan with a beautiful left-hand layup finish. Donovan Monroe is coming on. And, you know, we talked about we cannot be a one-man team. Now we go into the crucial part of the second half. We're down one, and we get off to an incredible start. Great kick out by Drew Godlock to his roommate, Antoine Wiggins. Um, Antoine only made one shot. Look at the kickouts. Now watch this passing. See, I love that, Nate. I, I just love We call that going around the horn, and Willis Hall tops it off with a three. Nate, he's on fire. What can I say? He's going to end up with 34 points. He's almost unguardable this game. But again, you can't. Now watch this shot. I mean, Nate, I, <laughs> this is not coaching. This is just um, good recruiting. And, um, you know, it's just fun to watch. A nice anticipation by Andrew Lawrence. And now, Nate, on the road, we take control of the game. And it's, it's wonderful to see. Now, you know, with, there's so much at stake. And it's just it's nice to see, again, kick out by Godlock and a finish by Monroe. Guard to guard. And when these two guards play like this, uh, we have a, just a great chance to win it. You know, he's just not going to miss. And um, he's just putting on a show right now. Even the Elon, I could feel it, Nate. Even when we're on the road, I could feel the Elon people talking about this guy. And they see a great follow-up. But, Nate, we go on the road, and we get a great road victory against Elon. Well, Coach, here's a chance to look at our AT&T Play of the Week. The future of the Cougars will be featured in this one. It's freshman to freshman to freshman. A great effort against the Furman Paladins. Our AT&T Play of the Week this week highlights the freshman. Jordan Scott, great pass to James Carlton. Better pass to Trent Wiedemann for the basket and a foul. Great view here. Freshman to freshman to freshman. Highlighting the future of this basketball team and it looks very bright. Jordan Scott makes a nice initial pass and then James Carlton. This is a great view. Jordan Scott to James Carlton to Trent Wiedemann. Basket and one. Your AT&T Play of the Week. And now the purple dusk of twilight time steals across the meadows of my heart. Once upon a time, there were three bears who lived together in a house of their own in a wood. In the network, no matter where you are, you're never far.
AT&T. Rethink possible. Welcome back to the Bobby Kremen Show, and it's time now for Cougar Conversations, brought to you by Coca-Cola. And joining us this week is Andrew Lawrence, the sophomore guard of the Cougars. Andrew, as we've watched you evolve as a player, you seem to have settled into a role now with the Cougars that you've become what Coach Kremens likes to refer to as his John Havlicek, his sixth man. Obviously, you're comfortable in that role. Yeah, I mean, I really embraced it. Um, Last year, I was kind of used to it. I came off the bench a lot last year, and this year I just come right back and seem to progress, and it's really seemed to help the team out. So, When you come into the game, there's a couple of things that are noticeable right away to somebody who's been watching you for a little over a season now. Number one, the confidence level. As I watch you out there, particularly playing defense, the confidence level is so much higher than it seemed to be at times last year. I just think I'm used to everything now. I'm, with schoolwork and everything and basketball on the floor, off the floor, I'm caught up with the pace of the game. I'm just, I'm feeling much better about myself this year than I did last year. So it's, it's obviously a showing, so. The defensive side of the game is something you take uh, a lot of pride in? A uh, huge amount of pride. Defense to me is all, all about pride. Um, last year I didn't play as much defense as I probably should have. And this, and Coach Kermans told me about it. So this um, off season when I went home, I really worked on that. This is an area the whole team seems to have uh, ratcheted up this year, their intensity on defense. Oh, definitely. We, um, I think that's why we're playing a lot better. We're a lot more focused in on the defensive end this year, um, which leads to our offense, too. Um, but we go over practice drills every day. The coaches drill us in defense, defense, defense. And like I said, it's paying off. Where you notice it particularly with, <clears throat> with you is, is the hands. The hands are so quick this year. You're, you're among the conference leaders in steals. And it seems like every game you're, you're going to get one or two breaks, either your own breakaways or you said send somebody else away as a result of a steal. Do you look for tells? Is there something that says to you, OK, I know what this guy is going to do? Not so much. It's more just about getting in and pressuring guards and just trying to, trying to speed them up and take them out of their comfort level. But it seems at times, and this may sound a little silly, but it almost, it almost seems as if you know what they're going to do before they know what they're going to do because you're there that quickly. Sometimes you just, it's all about anticipation. Sometimes I try and anticipate, which sometimes, sometimes I do get burned, but a lot of times I come up with the steals, which is good. Another area that, that you obviously got a, a great comfort level in this year is your, your outside shooting. Well, your shooting in general, but particularly your outside shooting. Right. I noticed that when you get set for a shot, uh, your feet are still, you're, you're not sort of, uh, you don't have happy feet, they're not moving right. around a lot this year, you're ready to go. That was um, a lot of work in the off season. Um, last year, a, few, a lot of times when I miss, it was all due to my footwork. So this year I just came back and I was much more prepared and now I'm ready whenever they pass me the ball. Now, you take a good number of three point, sh three point shots, uh, you attempt a good number of them. Right. Is that something you prefer? I mean, would you prefer to be shooting from the outside or do you, do you mind taking the ball inside? I actually prefer passing. Passing is my, my favorite thing to do on the basketball court. Um, but other than that, I don't mind. It. As you look uh, down the road through the balance of the conference season, uh, the team right now is in pretty good shape and, and, and the season is unfolding um, in a way that everybody's got to be happy with. Right. But you know in the Southern Conference, there's really no nights off. Oh, none. Just like Georgia Southern, um, Georgia Southern gave us a great game. Um, and every game is a tough game. You just got to enjoy all of them. Also, you've got uh, other things to look forward to. There's, a, at this time, an unknown factor coming up, and that's the ESPN Bracket Buster game. And then beyond that, the conference tournament. Right. But, uh, but the Bracket Buster game, I guess, will come up first. and. Uh, that's a chance for you guys to show your stuff on a national a national stage. Oh, that'd be a lot of fun. But right now, like I said, we're just conf um, concentrating on the conference, um, just trying to get as many wins because the bracket was the game will be important at the time. But right now, we're just moving on to the next game. How do you feel about how the team has progressed to this point? I feel like we're playing pretty decent. Um, even when we're not playing well, we seem to be able to grind out wins, which we struggled doing last year. Um, but this year, we're playing playing a lot better, and I think it's a lot due to defense. Defense sort of keys the whole thing? Well, defense really starts our offense. We're a good, pretty good team in transition, and defense gets us going. I'm not going to ask you to, to be a prognosticator, but what's your feeling as you, 
uh, go through the balance of the season, how do you think the team is going to stack up going down to the stretch? It depends how we play defense. It's all about our defense. If we continue to do what we're doing, we should be pretty good. But, I mean, anything can happen in basketball. Well, Andrew, thank you very much for joining us on no Cougar problem. Conversations. Good luck the rest of the way. Thank you. There's a whole lot more to come on the Bobby Kremen Show this week, so don't go away. We'll be right back after these messages. Welcome back to the Bobby Kremen Show. This is a chance during the show when we get to talk about the upcoming opponents for the Cougars, as well as a look around at various issues in the NCAA. And it's brought to you by the, our great friends at Piggly Wiggly. Just came back from Eli on the road. Greensboro here next, and then ESPN calls this Rivalry Week. Go cross town to the rival at the Citadel. Two tough ones. Well, Nate, you know, we're coming down a stretch here, and there's a lot at stake. Uh, for our viewers, um, we have two divisions in our comps. We have 12 teams, north and south. The first two place teams in each division get that very, very important buy going into the conference tournament at Chattanooga. And of course, um, the winner, the overall winner of the Southern Conference gets an automatic NIT bid, which is very prestigious because the NIT, sure. uh, they decrease the number of teams that they have. And, Nate, when you look at the NIT the last couple of years, all these big schools, like you take Michigan State right That's now, right. they're all of a sudden Michigan State's on the bubble for an NCAA because they got in a little bit of a slump. So Tom Izzo, a great coach, um, has to fight his way out of that, do something down the stretch or in the tournament. And so it's, you know, the winner of our conference getting the NIT, it's a big thing. And, of course, the winner of the tournament uh, gets the big ticket to the dance. So, Nate, um, you know, going over to the Citadel is, is, as you said, a really tough rivalry game. But to us, Nate, our philosophy is this, one at a time. And right. whatever game is, we got to stay in the present. You can't look behind and you can't look forward. And it's, it's easy to talk about, but you've got to have the mental toughness and the mental dif discipline in order to do it. Well, how do you relate to your kids? Talk about Greensboro. They played in the ACC before Christmas, basically, and they got beat by everybody yeah. in the ACC. Now they're starting to get their legs in the Southern Conference. Yeah, and, you know, it's easy. You just you, you show our team, you know, some of the wins that they have had. And once you do that, I think they get the message really quickly. And then, of course, Zach Urbanis, Austin Don, yep. Cameron Wells, great game across town. Well, uh, Chuck Drizel, they started out a little tough, new system, then they got hot. Um, they've, they're struggling a little bit right now. But um, forget records, you know, uh, in our state, it's like Clemson, South Carolina. When they play, forget records, forget everything. Well, same thing with College of Charleston and Citadel. Um, when they come over here, when we go over there, you can forget everything. It's a great, it's a great intercity rivalry. Well, we're going to talk about the implications of ties in the Southern Conference for advancement in a minute. But everybody wants to know, everybody's asked me since it happened, talk about Jeremy a little bit and what the future might hold for him. Well, first of all, thank God, um, once, uh, once this blood clot is uh, it's, uh, it's actually already removed with one procedure, once he's healthy, he'll be fine for the rest of his life. It'll have no effect uh, on him. You know, he'll be able to play basketball for, the, uh, for at least another 15 years. Um, the most important thing is that we've got to make sure it does not uh, affect his future. And the last thing we could ever do is try and bring him back too soon. Uh, we're going to say right now that he's out indefinitely. Always have that little ray of hope. Um, uh, but our team knows that there's a sense of urgency. When you lose your inside presence, your big man, other people have to step up. Injuries are all part of the game. And it's going to be really interesting to see how our team will uh, keep responding uh, to the injury. It can happen to anybody. Again, um, it's just so difficult when it's a senior. And um, Jeremy, I'm, I'm so proud of the way he's handled it. And, um, and hopefully he'll continue to handle it like that. And hopefully uh, we'll continue to have a sense of urgency with his loss and other people will step up. Two divisions in the Southern Conference, you alluded to that. Very possible <laughs> there's going to be ties. And there might even be a tie for that NIT automatic bid yeah. for the regular season champion. How does that shake out? Nate, what happens, the first, uh, the first criteria they go head-to-head uh, -head competition. Now, that's not totally fair uh, because uh, when you have two divisions, you cannot play everybody twice. Right. So just to give you an example, uh, right now, for instance, uh, Chattanooga and us, uh, if we wound up in a tie, 
Um, and uh, we only played them once at Chattanooga. They won that game. They would get the NIT bid. Right. And now if we only play them once here and we beat them and we get the NIT, it's still not fair. But it is what it is. Um, so there's nothing you can do about that. So there is, if any kind of ties, you go head-to-head -head first. And that's very important, obviously. Right now you're ahead of them, but there's still a lot of basketball yep. to be played. Yep. Let's talk about your Cougars a little bit. I looked this up. 29th in scoring in the NCAA, 27th in field goal percentage, 20th in threes made. Andrew Gadlock, and I know you love this, 6th in threes made per game. He's 4th in the NCAA in scoring, but he leads you in assists. That's big, those, that combination of, of assets for him. Jimmy, uh, Jimmy, for, uh, for, Jimmy Fredette is number Jim, one. Jimmy Fredette is number one. I'm so proud of Drew Godlock. Um, you know, we'll get into personal accolades later on. Uh, but, Nate, I cannot say enough about Drew Godlock. Uh, be, you know, when we get down to our last couple of shows, um, I want to talk a little bit more about Drew Godlock. Senior day is going to be tough. And the Fareed young man from Moorhead State, number one in rebounding in the nation, <laughs> you faced him as well. Moorhead State, what a nightmare that guy is. Very, very good player. A lot more um, season to play and a lot to talk about in the show when we get to those tiebreaker scenarios. If they occur, maybe they won't. We'll see. We'll be back with more of the Bobby Kremen Show right after these messages. Welcome back to the Bobby Kremen Show, and obviously we want to echo Coach Kremen's thoughts about his big man, Jeremy Simmons, and the Cougars' big man, Jeremy Simmons. We hope that it all works out for the best for Jeremy, whether he plays again or not this year, we hope he does, and for his family and for his team and for everybody involved. Um, let's recap a little bit. Cougars are going to be right behind me in the Carolina First Arena on Saturday against the UNCG Spartans of Mike DeMint, who's an up-and-coming team in this league. Cougars have to take care of business here. And then they'll go across town to play the Citadel on Thursday, which Coach Trezell and all the great players that he has over there, including Cameron Wells. It's interesting in that Cameron Wells and Andrew Gadlock both, both broke the all-time scoring records for their respective schools in the same season, so that's pretty neat. Um, a lot of basketball to be played yet in the Southern Conference, and we have more Bobby Kremen shows as well. Remember, you can follow us each week on My TV Charleston, Saturday at noon, and you can watch the archive shows on cfcsports.com. We want to thank everybody for watching this week. And for Coach Kremens and myself, we hope you'll join us next week once again on The Bobby Kremens Show.